Nintendo Switch. Uh, let's see what's going on. I've already taken a look at the port. The port seems fine, so I'm not applying the port uh, power to the port without inspecting it first. Always inspect the port first. Let's see what's going on. You will find out as I do. Okay, we're just stuck at a point one four. I'm not really sure what that's going to be. Interesting. Yeah, I don't recall seeing a point one four before. So. The only way we're going to know what's going on with this one is to open it up and do some testing and take a look around. So we'll open it up to do some initial testing and go from there. Okay, let's test around our M92 T36. And we'll start what we normally do on this capacitor, which is tied to Pi 3 USB on the back. Okay. And it is shorted. No, wait. Nope. No. no. No, it's just not. I was making contact with that one. So, appears like we're okay there. That doesn't make a lot of sense. Let me make sure I have a good ground connection here. Alright, this one is shorted though. Hmm. Don't usually get that one shorted, but it's definitely shorted. The line going to the chip is, uh, if, when you have a capacitor with only one line to a chip, the line going to the chip is the side you don't want shorted to ground, and that one appears to be shorted to ground. So let's check our other ones. That's shorted. That's shorted. And we have a quite a blown up uh, M92 T36 here. At least the CPU cap seems to be okay. Well, let's move up to our MOSFETs area. Make sure we don't have anything going on there. We'll make note that we do have a diode right here that can at times be problematic. Check our invincible fuse. It is still being invincible, I think. Yep. All right, let's check our test pads. None of these in the middle here should be have a short to ground, and we got shorts to ground. Okay. All sorts of things shorted going on on this one. Okay, let's check around our BQ24193, make sure we don't have a short on the filter, but, the, I'm sorry, the coil, that's a filter, coil, whatever. You do want continuity going straight through, but you don't want it short to ground. Check our caps around BQ24193, appear to be okay. And check out this test bed, okay. So we got... Right off the bat, we got uh, a whole lot of shorts around uh, M92 T36. So we are going to have to remove this board and remove that chip and see if those shorts get relieved and go from there. Okay, we have the board out of the housing. And real quick, I want to do some testing around the Pi 3 USB just before we get going to town on the M92 T36. Now that we have the board out, we can do so. Now on these on these uh, filters here, we want continuity going straight through. But not side to side. Okay, and I'd like to check them for shorts to ground as well. None. Okay, let's check our big capacitor right here. And it seems fine. Very good. Doesn't seem like we have a problem with Pi 3 USB at the moment, uh, but uh, sometimes it can fail in ways that you cannot tell. Anyway, now we need to set up to remove the M92 T36. And while I prep for that, I will throw my expected temperatures up for this job. They are, as always, subject to change if the job changes, but I don't expect it for a Nintendo Switch. These temperatures are brought to you by the Amazon Associate links in the description. If you click on one of those links and buy anything during that session, it doesn't even have to be a piece of that equipment. A small portion of that will go to supporting the channel, and it will not cost you an extra dime. It would be much appreciated. Okay, let's switch you back to microscope. And we will remove our M92 T36. Okay. 
Okay, in this case, I want to check and see if we have relieved our shorts. Which one short was kind of in an odd location. But it is gone. Good. Very good. And let's check our test pads. And nothing is short. Excellent. I'm waiting for that center pad to get to become wet. Okay. Now we want to make sure it grabs the chip before we let go. There we go. Surface tension will be our friend from here now. Centered. Remove the heat. Let it dry for a second. And then press down and put the heat, reapply the heat. done. Clean up using our Pico Pencil. Mm -hmm. Or I'll have to grab the Micro Pencil. Being a little grumpy. No bridges. Everything looks good. Okay, let's try a quick test with the PSU. And see what happens. Absolutely nothing. That's not what we want to see. There we go. Okay, try back down to zero, please. Hanging is not good either. What is going on here? Did we get it bad in 92? Okay, that's normal. That is not. Don't like that. See what happens with our. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna go grab the battery. See if we can get it play nicer. Yeah, we're still getting flat Zippo. Feeling like I got a bad M92 T36 here. Let's get our battery squid. Be switching channels over to channel two on the right. And we'll activate. And it's not activating on that side. reasonably normal behavior on that side okay so I think we got a bad M92 T36 we will try another one okay let's do the exact same process again Looks pretty good. We'll clean it off and then we'll test again. Test again. Why am I 
we're still getting zero. I'm still getting one side charging. That's not correct. Do I have a bad port and just don't know it? Yeah, I'm feeling like I have a bad port here. Yeah, fast charging on that side. Nothing on that side. So, let's take a real close look at this port. My other chip might have been fine. Doesn't look like there's anything wrong with this board. Solid, looks stable. Hmm. Could be the diode arrays. Let's pull this guy and test. Every once in a while, these guys can be problematic. My goal here is just going to be to low melt this thing off if it's possible. Try again. Still nothing on that side. Normal on that side. All right, just in case, I'm gonna pull the other one too. These are non-critical, so I am not worried about replacing them. Later revisions looked them off entirely, even though they had population spots for them. Even Nintendo knew they sucked. They're supposed to be there for some sort of ESD protection thing, but I don't think they really work or do their jobs. So. Nice in theory, poor in practice. Okay, we re reconnected our battery just to make sure it's not the PSU being, you know, fussy. Okay. Normal. Okay, switch it around. And normal on both sides, yay! Finally! I get to show you one with the diode arrays being a problem. So it was definitely our diode arrays causing the problem. Uh, probably the back one. Again, these are non-critical items, so I'm not gonna replace them. We're just gonna leave them off. Like I said, in later revisions, they left them off even though they had population spots for them. They another, one of those uh, design decisions that were was great in theory, not in practice, so they went away. Uh, anyway. Uh, we're going to put this thing back together and have to do some testing and go from there. Alright, let's give this thing a test with our charged battery. And see what it does. We're watching left. 0.47 should reset. Fast charging. And we are booted. Yay! Alright, fast charging on that side. Switch around. And fast charging on that side. 
So excellent. We are back up and running. So I'm gonna reassemble this entirely, or almost entirely. Not not entirely, but because we the first thing, the next thing we want to do is test the dock. And I always test, put it together enough to test the dock once it's charged its battery, uh, because. I don't want to reassemble entirely and then have to disassemble entirely again to deal with a dock issue. So we will assemble enough to do a dock test after the battery is charged and then we'll come back. Okay, and as you can see it's docking. So we will uh, assemble entirely and then we'll come back and do the rest of the testing. But uh, I always want to check the dock first. So now we'll move on from there. Okay. We're back to do further testing. As you can see on the USB meter, we're pulling 15 volts at 0.83 amps, which is pretty normal. We are going to put in, it'll jump up here when we put in our uh, joy cons. We just want to make sure everything is connecting and charging. Okay, one is being seen. And two is being seen. And let's click on our joy cons and make sure they are charging. They're pretty empty at the moment. And as you can see, the uh, amperage has jumped up on the USB meter. Let's make sure we're picking up our networks. And we are picking up our networks. I will wait to test the Bluetooth until these uh, Joy-Cons have had a few minutes to charge. Uh, let's check our game. This is my game. It is now on their system. So, game card reader is working. Alright, see if we can test the Joy-Con yet. There we go. It is working. But if that battery depleted immediately. But it's working. So that's really going to be it for this repair. Uh, everything seems to be working. It's now charging on both sides. It's now uh, it's docking and everything else. So in summary, we had an M92. Uh, we had, first off, we were, when we plugged it in, we had no power. Uh, 0.14. Uh, current draw which is a little bit odd as not a typical indication of a PMIC issue but it was shorted all over the place uh, we we disassembled it and tested it and it was shorted on what, like three capacitors and one kind of an odd capacitor you don't usually see a short there it was shorted on a test pad as well so it was definitely blown uh, we went and changed it and we were getting one side charging, so there was a possibility that the N92 T36 that I put on there was bad. We tried another one, we were getting the same behavior. Uh, so the next easiest thing to grab for on this version of board is the diode arrays. They can oftentimes cause uh, difficulty. Well, not oftentimes, I'd say it's pretty rare actually. I did have a rash of them like last year, but uh, since then I've really not had any uh, diode array issues but they're the low hanging fruit when you're running into an issue like that uh, because the port looked fine there was it was structurally fine it looks just appeared to be perfect in perfect condition uh flawless so the low hanging fruit was the diode arrays we tried the one on the uh m92 t36 side it didn't solve the problem so we went ahead and pulled the one on the pi 3 usb side and that did solve the problem uh, it was definitely the diode arrays causing the problem. So it turns out the first in my 236 we put on there was probably fine and I saved it so it should be all good there. Anyway, uh, that's going to be it for this repair. I appreciate your chance. Uh, if you have any questions, please post them in the comments below. Uh, I'll do my best to answer them or direct it somewhere that can answer them. I really appreciate the channel support. I appreciate you watching the videos and we'll see you in the next one.